Hello, everyone. Um, with a raise of hand, how many of you are running containers in production? Oh, that's quite a, a lot of people. Very surprising. So we'll be talking today about um, what we can do with network namespaces that ordinary people aren't doing, basically. Um, we're going to cover what namespaces are, um, how containers use namespaces. We're going to go over the specific of uh, network namespaces, and we're going to see some cool tricks and things you can do with it. Our goal for this talk is to be able to do something like this, basically use a context manager in Python just with Tor and have everything automatically inside that context manager go through Tor or whatever other container that does networking stuff for that matter. So what are namespaces? Basically, um, containers utilize two uh, major functions in the Linux kernel. One of them is uh, one of them is uh, namespace, and the other one is uh, C groups. Basically, C groups allow us to put resource restrictions. For example, the amount of CPU time a single container can consume, and namespaces give us the VM-like isolation. Um, that that that's like part of what we're used to when using namespace and uh, when using containers. So it gives us isolation between our different containers in our production environment. So um, how do containers use namespaces? So if we'll take Docker, Docker, for example, when you run a Docker container and you run PS inside a container, you can't see processes from outside this container. So if you have two Docker containers running and you run PS in one of them, you won't see processes from the other. That's the PID namespace. PID as in PID, process ID, the ID that every process on Unix has. And network namespaces allow us to isolate the networking stack. So this allows us to have different IP addresses inside a container and outside, um, different firewall rules, and the whole bunch of, of network configurations that Linux allow us to do. So once we use network namespaces, those changes are isolated and contained. So basically, network namespaces virtualize the network stack and allow us to tune kernel parameters per namespace. So some use cases. Um, we can restrict the access of a particular container to, let's say, a subnet on AWS by adding a firewall rule to draw up some of the packets just inside a container. And one other thing we can do with this, I don't know how many of you are aware, but when you're running a VPN software on your computer, it basically hijacks all the traffic that your computer generates. It's like it, you can fine grain, you can define this in a fine grained fashion, usually with the various VPN software. But usually, what corporate VPNs do, they hijack all your network traffic and just transfer it through the VPN. So, one big use case for network namespaces is to just run those um, VPN clients in isolation so you can run multiple at the same machine and don't need to scale machines, basically. So um, for this talk, I've prepared a real life example. Um, and from the goal, from the beginning of the slides, um, we're going to be hacking on Tor. So basically, um, Tor, the regular interface to use Tor, every, with a raise of hand, how many of you heard of Tor? Ah, great. So basically, um, the interface to use Tor is you run, you run a process on your machine. It gives you a SOX proxy interface. And from there, you just when you use this proxy, you access the internet through Tor. Um, I'm going to be using a network uh, container that runs, Docker, runs Tor on Docker. And basically, all the traffic that, ge that is generated inside this container that we'll be using um, will automatically go through Tor with no need for proxy configurations. This is something that has to do with the container I'm using. So this is the mentioned container. Um, it's on GitHub. It's not something that I did. Basically, before I knew it existed, I reinvented it on my own. Um, but then for this talk, I just found it and said, OK, that's one last thing I have to talk about. So here it is. This is a magic container. And what I'm doing here is I'm running, I'm running Docker Run 
and giving this container a name called Tor Router and just using the image, uh, the, the vanilla image of this container. Um, okay, so we have a container running. Now let's do some cool stuff with it. So the most basic thing you can do with this container, and this is from the documentation, um, the magic flag is the dash dash net flag for Docker Run that allows you to reattach a new container to an existing network namespace. So what this essentially does is it tells Docker, please run this container, and for the network namespace, use a uh, pre-existing network namespace and just attach to it instead of creating a new one. Because when you're running new containers, Docker creates the namespaces and C groups for you automatically. So we're opting out of a new network namespace creation for this particular container. And I'm using a different container for this one called Flango NetUtils, which just gives me the curl command as part of Docker. So what I'm doing here is I'm running a new container reusing the Tor router network namespace and running curl against an API for the Tor project that just returns a JSON that tells you two things, basically. One thing is your IP address. The second is a Boolean flag indicating are you coming from Tor or not. So basically, this will be our test for making sure that this indeed works as intended. So this is how this looks like. So there, we have the root network namespace, so when we're on the host, we're basically on the root network namespace. And then when we launch the Tor container, Docker creates a, a new network namespace for us. This container connects to Tor and configures all the networking with IP tables, tricks, etc. And for you, it's just a container that's connected to Tor when you run whatever, without setting any proxy settings. This container will just exit, egress to the internet through Tor. It's doing some um, transparent proxy tricks around the hood, behind the, behind the scenes. If you want to know some more details about this, come, come chat with me after the talk. It's not really the most important thing about this talk. I'm just using it as an example case because it's easy. So um, the architecture is basically we have the Tor container. When we spin it up, Docker creates a new network namespace for us, and we're just reusing this network namespace from the curl container that we're running afterwards. Another way to do the exact same thing is with NSenter. Basically, everything in Unix has an API and usually comes with a command line tool that lets you play with it instead of writing code. So for example, curl is a good example because curl is part of libcurl. And that's like the reference implementation or example client that you can just use. So you can think of NSenter as a tool that exposes the low-level Linux API for attaching to existing namespaces, not, not necessarily network namespaces. Over here, what I'm doing, I'm asking Docker to give me the PID of the process, the root process inside a container. And then I'm using NSenter to enter to this PIDs network namespace and run the same command again. So again, curl, this time, it doesn't run from the Docker image. Uh, CRL is run from my host. Basically, I'm just sw switching the network namespace. So the rest of the things are from the host. So the file system, all those stuff, exactly like the host. Basically, you can just run arbitrary binaries inside network namespace by using this command. So. How can we do this in Python? So basically, there's a PyP package called NSenter that lets you do that same thing in Python. And basically, if you look at their GitHub, what you'll see is they'll just switch the network namespace. Again, it takes an existing namespace from a PID, just like the NSenter from previous slide. And they, their example is showing you how they're launching a new process inside that context manager. So basically, like we're running curl over here, that's what they're doing in their example. What I've discovered is you don't need to, to run new processes in order to switch network namespaces or other namespaces for that matter. So basically, we can go back and forth inside the same process and, and do the network namespace switching. So basically, we don't need to run a new process in here. We can just uh, do write Python code that just 
accesses the internet and it will go through the network namespace. So here's a Python example. Um, this is a stripped down version. It, I didn't include all the imports and all that stuff, but basically it does exactly the same thing as the curl command from two slides ago. Um, it gets a PID of an existing container as an argument, reattaches to it, and um, using requests, Python requests instead of CRL, hitting the same API endpoint, and basically we're expecting it to return that this code is indeed running through Tor, as opposed to running this code without attaching it to a Tor network namespace. So I've prepared a demo. This is a recorded demo. I'm not going to waste time on technical difficulties, hopefully. So what you can see here is the three examples from previous slides. Basically, the first one is uh, just reattaching to an existing network container through the Docker facilities for doing this. And then I'm showing that with NS Center, we're getting the same behavior. The important thing to note here that his story is true, right? Um, so NS Center and the Python example all return the same IP address and all say that we're running through Tor, which is what I intended. All this doesn't come for free. <laughs> um, I've discovered a few pitfalls basically because software wasn't designed with switching network namespaces during the execution of your program in mind. <laughs> so this brings up a whole set of weird issues and things that you need to understand before doing this. The first thing that's worth mentioning is connection pools. So basically, um, if I'll go back to my Python example, if you see here, I'll, I'm using request session the reason I'm doing this is I don't want request, requests to create a connection pool and reuse connections because I needed to recreate a connection. If it will reuse an existing connection, the pre-existing connection will belong to the previous network namespace. So an important thing to note here, the important bit is in what network namespace you were when you created the socket. So we don't want connection pools. We can actually use this for doing some cool stuff. For, for example, in async IO in Python, you could create a listening socket inside a network namespace or for a proxy, for example, you can receive connections from network namespace A and like proxy the clients through con network namespace B. So you could do a lot of cool stuff with this feature. So, um, as I said, TCP connections are bound to the network. Um, and we should make sure that we're making new ones so to avoid this problem. Another interesting issue is with um, async code. So basically, the entire idea behind all the async frameworks that goes for Python 3 async IO, Golang, Node, all those async frameworks, async languages, are basically reusing the same OS thread for doing multiple I.O. operations, right? So when we reuse the OS thread and the network namespace is set on the thread level, this can cause some weird issues. Also note that, that you need to make sure, for example, if you're switching namespace inside an async code and you're yielding by doing a wait, some other code can run and switch the namespace again. So you need to be aware of it. Um, I'll, if, if that's something that interests you, come back and talk with me. Uh, there's a workaround for Python 3 async IO specifically. You could patch um, one of the uh, task instance methods and just basically whenever uh, async IO task is executed, um, an underscore step function is called. So you could hack around that function and switch namespace before calling it and switch back afterwards. Again, if that's something you want to do, come talk with me. I'll happily explain it to you. Another weird stuff uh, that could happen because of this is, I don't know if you're aware, but basically on Unix, your DNS server is configured through a file. And when we're switching network namespace, we're not switching the file system namespace. And your resolve conf still holds the DNS server from your host. So there is a cool way to work around that. 
Um, basically, um, the Tor container in particular just hijacks all DNS traffic. It basically, there's a firewall rule there that says every traffic that goes to UDP port 53, just rewrite the destination to name server A, and that's it. You just hijack the traffic. You need to be aware of that. Also, specifically to Python, um, async IO default resolver uses a thread pool and the libc resolver, which is synchronous and caches the DNS server config from resolve conf per thread. So here be wolves, be careful. Um, other than that, um, there's some more cool use cases for this technology. A few I've had in mind and thought I would share. So for example, you could, you could create a uh, context of your code that doesn't have any uh, network connectivity. So we can have like a uh, context manager with no network. We can also have things like restricted network. We can limit, we can sandbox part of our code not to be able to access production services, for example. We can do rate limiting. So over here, I'm passing a parameter to, um, in this slide, I'm using, I'm passing a parameter to the context manager. So basically, in the first example, I've started the Docker container, the Tor container. You can say out of band, it wasn't part of the Python application, but basically you can orchestrate this from Python as well. And because you're running the container, you can even pass it parameter that will tune however, however it's configuring itself. So basically, we could have like a generic network rate limit container and just give it the uh, bytes per second as a parameter. And in our context manager, when we're starting the container, we'll pass this through and we'll get a generic network rate limit container. More things we can do, um, we can introduce, induce packet loss to our connections. We can induce latency. And basically, anything you can imagine that uh, is bound to a network namespace. Some more things that are per network namespace in the Linux kernel are stuff like TCP parameters. You can tune window sizes and all those stuff. So you could have, for example, a container that's optimized for high latency one links. For example, if you're doing uh, cross DC replication or those sort of stuff. So to summarize, we can do a lot of cool networking tricks with network namespaces. Um, we can test our code in weird network conditions. We can do the, use this for sandboxing and we can use this for teleporting. So for example, if you need to access a certain website from multiple Gale locations, just like the, the Adam Stock was mentioning they need to scrape some websites from an Israeli IP address and they're running it from uh, an Israeli server. Basically, they could just deploy an Israeli VPN and create a container that connects to this VPN and just run it anywhere in the world and have this, piece, this particular piece of code use an Israeli IP address when running. Questions? Yeah, over there. Uh, can this work in <coughs> nested namespaces? Like, could you run this inside the Docker container? I assume it would because, uh, by the way, I understand how these things work. So I think that it should work. Just as long as there's... So if you can run a new container and it, it will have network connectivity, I see no reason why this wouldn't work. Like, once you're running inside a new namespace, all the TC parameters, the IP tables rules, all those stuff are namespaced. So I guess it should work. Yes. How do you create the namespace from your uh, IP address? So um, handling, like doing all those networking stuff is a big part of Docker. There's like Kubernetes and all those technologies do a lot of things around networking. You could do this on your own. There's, um, I haven't mentioned it, but there's, uh, there's the IP root 2 package on Linux that gives you the IP net and S uh, command that lets you create arbitrary network namespaces. You don't really need to use Docker for this. I think that Docker makes this super simple because you can just ship those containers with all the configurations that you care about, and it's easily deployable, easily shareable. I think I think that's the right approach for tackling this instead of in reinventing part of the Docker networking stack. Docker is doing a lot of 
weird stuff behind the scenes. It creates firewall rules for you. It configures not. It does a whole bunch of stuff. You can just use Docker and orchestrate the startup and teardown of your container inside your context manager. I think that's that's the best approach to tackle this. Don't don't worry about the network namespaces. Assign it to some other tool to maintain. Um, so as far as I know, I think you can adjust QoS on IP tables. And basically, if you assign a new network to one of the namespaces, you can say, pockets coming from this IP address have QoS of that, and all the others have lower uh, quality of service. Um, so for attaching, so for for the Tor container, the example needs privileged because of something they did inside there, but I don't think it's mandatory. It's one of the features requires it, and they didn't um, give you a way of um, disabling this particular feature. So basically, for this particular container, you need privileged, but for others, you don't, and you could probably get this container to run without privileged. But do know that in order to do NS Center, you need root privileges. So. So in async IO, there's the, the right way to do DNS is using AIO DNS. So this allows you to configure the DNS server on a per IO loop or even per connection. I think you could supply, when you're creating a connection, you can supply the DNS library and it can do that. I don't remember the details, but we can, we can look at the code later if you want. All right, thank you very much.